Hello everybody and welcome back to the Jerry PT version of PT on Ice. I'm Christina Previtt. I am on faculty with Dustin Jones for the Modern Management of the Older Adult course. I hope that everybody is having an amazing week. I always find like the weeks fly by, especially in the summertime. In uh, Ontario where I live, there's a big fair that happens called the CNE. And whenever the CNE is on, it always reminds me of the end of summer. And so the CNE is starting this weekend. And so I'm kind of starting to feel like it is just the end of summer coming up. It's passed by so quickly and September is going to be here before we know it. Um, so today for the podcast, I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about aging and aging in general. And as a PhD student, I always laugh because part of my job as a doctoral student is just to kind of think through different constructs. And as a clinician, I'm allowed to take these constructs that I'm thinking about at a very high level when it comes to some of my research and apply it very clinically. And so one of the things that we talk about a lot with our older adult population is that your body, and I guess with some of our very younger uh, clients as well, but your body always needs to be strong enough to handle what you're asking it to do. And if it's not strong enough, it starts to break down. And we see that with uh, different tendinopathies. We can see that with some of the degenerative changes that happen as a normal consequence of aging, but the pain manifestation that happens with some of those degenerative changes are often related to strength. And so, especially as we get older, when we hit 50, we start to see a decline in strength and that accelerates at 70. And this is even more pronounced with power that I find that strength and uh, exercise related interventions become a very important and critical part of my management plan for a lot of my older clients. It's important across the lifespan, but I definitely make a point of really highlighting it very early with some of my older clients, even as early as the assessment saying that we really need to start work, working on that resiliency. And so as I started thinking about that, uh, I feel like it comes down to a question of reserve. And what happens as we get older, and I started to realize that this wasn't just isolated to the musculoskeletal system. This is something that is going across organ systems and we talk about it a lot with the APHPT. And so I wanted to take some of those constructs and apply them to an aging population. And so here's what I mean. So we talk about thresholds and when we're young, we have a lot of reserve and redundancy. We'll start with the musculoskeletal system and then I'm gonna kind of make an argument for some of the other systems. So in the musculoskeletal system, we, we tend to have a lot of reserve, so our body doesn't break down as quickly, and our recovery, so our resiliency, is a lot higher. So you know, we always say that. I used to bounce back, heck, even when we're drinking, our hangovers are less bad when we're in our early 20s than when we're in our 30s and 40s. And it's because we have a lot of that reserve, we have a lot of that resiliency, and our bodies, when we're a little bit younger, are primed um, to recover, and we have a lot more room to work with before we start hitting pain thresholds, before we start hitting loss of independence thresholds. And as we kind of go through the decades of our life, that reserve starts to decrease. And so as that reserve starts to decrease, our body starts getting more and more towards that threshold where either one, we're gonna see a pain presentation, which can happen with tendinopathies, overuse injuries, chronic conditions, where we get to a point where our body has broken down to a level that is starting to send those pain signals up to our brain. 
or we start getting to a level where our functional reserve has decreased so much that we are now flirting with a loss of independence. And so as we start losing some of our functional reserve in the musculoskeletal system in relation to strength, power, and endurance, we start slowly, slowly easing towards that line and we start dipping, if we start dipping below either that pain threshold and going into that pain level or that pain zone, or we're starting to go towards that level in terms of loss of functional independence, that tends to be where a physio will intervene and try and boost that reserve and boost that resiliency so that we are now at least hovering above the line. And Dustin and I make an argument that we wanna not just kind of hover above the line, but increase that reserve as much as possible within our given physiological parameters so that we have longer and longer or more um, ability to stay above that line for as long as possible. And often that is why as we start getting into um, working with a lot of our older clients, some of the things that are becoming more popular that we are talking about and I've spoken a little bit about on some of our podcasts is clinical geriatric syndromes. And so I've talked about this in regards to frailty. When we're talking about clinical geriatric syndromes, we're talking about this constellation of signs and symptoms that are not necessarily in isolation causing an issue, but because of this lack of reserve across multiple organ systems, we are now having this presentation that is a syndrome because it's not related to one thing, but is actually related to a lack of reserve across multiple systems. And I thought that that was really interesting. And as I started thinking about the way that this is a really important caveat and a really important construct that we use for Jerry PT, are we really trying to work on filling up those buckets, kind of like the APHPT talks about in terms of stress management and resiliency, if our buckets are overflowing because we're so close to that line where we're either dipping into a pain zone or dipping into a spot where we're losing our, our ability to do certain tasks independently, then it's almost like we're, we're at a point where that bucket is about to overflow. When we're talking about frailty, Linda Free did a lot of research in the early 2000s where she was talking about this, this multi-organ presentation. And she was saying that when you look at blood work for individuals and you characterize them along the frailty continuum, that people who are more frail are also going to be be having with on blood um, blood diagnostics more indications of either subclinical or clinical levels of disease across multiple organ systems and so when we're thinking about this in uh, different settings I thought you know in outpatient MSK where I am I really focus a lot on the musculoskeletal system but it's interesting for clinicians who are working in more hospital-based settings. So I was thinking about it, for example, if we're thinking about reserve and we're thinking about the cardiac system, for example, when our heart does not have the reserve to perfuse our tissues around our body, we start exhibiting signs of congestive heart failure and we're thinking about ejection fractions. Hi, Joe. <laughs> When we are thinking about this with COPD, when our lungs no longer have the capacity to provide the appro appropriate oxygen levels to our tissues, we start exhibiting more signs of COPD. So again, we're thinking about reserve. And as physiotherapists working in settings where we're seeing people with issues like congestive heart failure and COPD, again, we're going right back to that reserve issue where we're not having individuals with the appropriate capacity and resiliency to match the demands of what they're doing. And so if we start taking these constructs that are very natural for us to think about in terms of working with older clients for uh, rehabilitation and we apply it to different organ systems, 
we really are trying to use very lifestyle focused interventions to try and boost the resiliency of our clients across multiple domains. We know that with the APHBT, we talk a lot about the impact of different lifestyle related factors like sleep and nutrition and exercise, stress management, social relationships on our ability to be healthy. And I think that this is a really important construct to make sure that we're applying to this reserve concept when we're thinking about our older clients. We know that some of these different lifestyle conditions or these lifestyle related factors are things that are gonna really, really boost our body's physical reserve. And so if we can do that in the context of the musculoskeletal system, I don't think it's that much of a stretch to be thinking about that in terms of the demand across different systems. And if we start thinking about different chronic conditions as a reserve issue, like our, for example, again, another uh, way that we can think about it is that when type two diabetes manifests, our body's ability to respond to blood sugar spikes hits a, a point where we no longer have the capacity. We don't have the reserve in terms of our body's response with insulin. And we hit a threshold level where all of a sudden we just can't handle it anymore. And we start getting that diagnosis of borderline diabetes into type two diabetes. And so all of these things kind of come back to these same underlying constructs. And I think that it's really interesting because you know, we started realizing this, that a lot of these chronic conditions, type two diabetes, even dementia, uh, cardiovascular disease, these all have this underlying inflammatory cascade that happens that affects different organ systems and leads to a decrease in reserve and causes a manifestation of a chronic condition that could potentially happen in different organ systems. It's just which one hits that threshold that for the clinical diagnosis first and why we're seeing this rise of multimorbidity. And that inflammatory cascade is at the heart of that, but the mechanism behind it is often this loss of reserve, this loss of resiliency and ability to recover, which kind of overlaps, overlaps in a very interesting way with our older clients who are seeing this loss of reserve as a natural consequence of the aging process. And so some of these underlying contracts I think are really interesting. And if we start conceptualizing our different interventions in this way, how are we building resiliency and how can that translate into a, a building of reserve across different systems? I think we'll be in a really uh, good, good frame of mind to be able to think about the client in a very holistic way and really impact the the amount of, of work that we can do um, with people with different chronic conditions and multimorbidity, and maybe be a little bit less um, worried about working with individuals with a lot of stuff going on, like I've talked about in previous podcasts. All right, that is my thought for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, Dustin's gonna be on the podcast for the next couple weeks, so I will see you in three weeks time. Have a wonderful end of your summer. And if you guys have any questions or comments or positive anecdotes, you can put them in the comments below. Bye.